What do you make of this really now? Do, do you really desperately hope that, you know, what started with swimming might ripple through cycling and then maybe we get it in football, maybe we get it in the Olympics and actually, basically, women are protected in sport? Um, absolutely. The women need to be protected. And what FINA came forward with was really, really uh, brilliant in the, in the sense of you can still have inclusivity with asking the, um, the, the young man that if they transition you know, start taking puberty blockers before the age of 12, then you mitigate to a degree the advantages of being born male. The, the problems that we still see is that you have a testosterone rush that goes on when you're still in the womb and there's more uh, testosterone spikes. But this is a good start towards um, protecting women and also having a degree of inclusivity for the transgender athletes. OK, so because because that's interesting, because, look, uh, do you massively care about transgender athletes? Because that is that is an argument, isn't it? Which is that if you decide to transition and that's, you know, OK, you may well feel very much like you've been born in the wrong body. Transitioning is not an easy process. I don't think people should underestimate, obviously, what you have to go through in order to transition. But once you've done that, have you completely nullified the right to compete in competitive sport? I don't believe so. I mean, I, I know that the IOC is really looking at trying to have fairness and inclusivity, but it has been shown that you can't have both. And by having inclusivity, you're you're excluding the women and you're taking away mm. fairness from the women. And, and that is not right. And the UCI, supposedly they were in communication with all of the international uh, federations and they knew that FINA had this on board, that they were going to you know, we had heard that they were going to roll things back. Mm. And they didn't. They kind of took the, I call it the coward's route of doing this, you know, 2.5 nanomoles of testosterone. And, yeah. and all of the science shows that that doesn't, that doesn't mitigate the advantage. Well, you talked to me there about, the, about the, the coward's route on this. And I have been absolutely staggered, staggered by how many weak people are out there. And that makes it fantastic and uh, remarkable, actually, that you managed to get 80 people to back you, OK? But what about the rest of it? And this, and, and this was just in cycling. But more importantly, the... Uh, the uh, but where are the others? Secret... Why isn't every woman against this? That's what I don't understand. Every, every woman is against this, but the cancel culture is real. They're, uh, they're cancelling athletes. I mean, I, I, I could go on for a while about what Rafa has done you know, to their athletes, if they dare speak up, you know, if they, uh, they're employees. And so you have people trying to keep their jobs. And, and, and the cancel culture so, is Tell me what real. happens, Inga. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I think you've hit the nail on the head there again. It's just happened a lot tonight, actually. People, my guests have been absolutely spot on this evening. Inga, what happens? If you want to stand up, you just mentioned there, you said you could go on for a while about what happens if someone sticks their head above the parapet. What happens? Go on for a while about it. Yeah, like, like I was on the Oregon Bicycle Racing Association and I talked to the executive director and said, I want to put this letter together to the IOC because it's coming up again um, about the transgender athletes. And they're like, yeah, go ahead and sign this. And I got the, uh, the executive director's, not only their approval, but I got a signature. And here comes McKinnon and that crowd. And it was like full on going after every single person that I had posted on Facebook. Um, anybody they could find, they went after their jobs. I mean, I've got the receipts behind it about how they they targeted all of these people. And so I understand why people don't speak up. And what I see now is there's this wonderful, there's this domino effect going on that is not going mm. to stop. And the women still claim the sport back. And, you know, and right now, like with what the UCI has done, the Professional uh, Cycling Association for Women has reached out to the UCI. They have, we put forth a letter, uh, a letter from the Union Cycliste mm. Feminine that uh, five of us who are Olympians, we brought in uh, Catherine Devine and Emma Hilton, um, renowned scientists, and tried to put forth this information to the UCI. And the UCI was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're asking to have a meeting. We're asking to be there. And we were we were ignored. And so when yeah. the, uh, the UCI executive, um, the, the management committee, committee meeting came up, hmm. we were not asked to be there. We were not told yeah. about it. We didn't have an ability to get in there and to consult. 
And, yeah. you know, and that's a travesty towards women. But you're, but you're on the right side of history. And if you go now, and in fact polls were done, this is what we covered last week, opinion polls have been done, extensive opinion polls have been done, that say, unequivocally, the vast majority of the British people are on your side. And they are. I don't need an opinion poll to tell me that. Just go outside. I always say this, it passes the pub test. Go into any single pub up and down the country, any single no. bar, any single restaurant, and ask most normal people, because that's what they are, most no. normal people, what they think about this, and they completely agree with you. It's just a load of woke types, often in the media, often, you know, in positions of power when it comes to writing a glossy magazine, that are putting the pressure on this stuff, Inga. And actually, does it for the first time now feel like you might be winning? You know, I think that we are, even though we didn't make a lot of progress with this last meeting, uh, the, the, the CPA women or the Cycling Professional Association for Women, they did a survey this spring of, of all of their professional cyclist women. 93% said they didn't want transgender women yeah. in their sport. Of course 93 it was put forth to the UCI and it was ignored. And so if you have these representatives that don't allow the organization, CPA, to even be at this meeting to consult, to talk with, and you ignore well, the survey of 93% of the women. I mean, it's, what do you say to that? These people should not be in charge with anything that have to do with women if they can't. Not exactly. If, if they can't talk to the CPA professional women, they can't look at a survey. It's like, they're protecting their careers. You know, uh, Laperant and, and Katerina Nash, they want to use the UCI as a stepping stone right. to the IOC. Well, if they can't protect women at this level, no. we're going to promote I, I, them to the IOC. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.